Hello, America. I'm Mark Levin, and this is Life, Liberty, and Levin. You're going to learn a great deal tonight about what's going on in the Middle East and in our own country with these protests. No context is ever provided. And why would it be? The New York Times, which covered up the Holocaust, has once again taken the wrong side in the battle between good and evil, as have most of America media, except here at this network, I'm proud to say. So let's get started, because there's a lot to do and a lot to say, and I hope you'll stick with us. This is very important. I want to read something to you. The Mufti and the Fuhrer. Many of you are saying, what's a Mufti, and what does it have to do with Hitler? You're about to learn more than anybody's ever told you before. This is the Jewish virtual library, but you can basically find it anywhere. In 1941, Haj Amin al-Husani fled to Germany and met with Adolf Hitler, Heinrich Himmler, Johann von Ribbentrop, and other Nazi leaders. He wanted to persuade them to extend the Nazis' anti-Jewish program to the Arab world. The Mufti sent Hitler 15 drafts of declarations he wanted Germany and Italy to make concerning the Middle East. One called on the two countries to declare the illegality of the Jewish home in Palestine. And let me add a footnote here. It was Arafat who came up with the idea in the 1960s to call these Arabs Palestinians. The Jews used to be called the Palestinians or the people of Palestine. Furthermore, they accord to Palestine, to other Arab countries, and the right to solve the problem of the Jewish elements in Palestine and other Arab countries in accordance with the interest of the Arabs and by the same method that the question is now being settled in the access countries, quote unquote. In other words, wiping out the Jews like the Nazis. Now, what does this have to do with anything? He was the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem. He was one of the original architects of brutal terrorism against the Jews in the area. And it's the lineage for the modern day Palestinian terrorist movements. He is. On November 28, 1941, the Mufti met with Hitler, who told him the Jews were his foremost enemy. The Nazi dictator rebuffed the Mufti's request for a declaration in support of the Arabs. You know why? He viewed the Arabs as dogs. But it didn't matter. He wanted to use them. Telling him the time was not right, the Mufti offered Hitler his, quote, thanks for the sympathy which he had always shown for the Arab and especially Palestinian cause, and to which he had given clear expression in his public speeches. The Arabs were Germany's natural friends because they had the same enemies as had Germany, namely the Jews. Now that's the Mufti speaking. Hitler replied, Germany stood for uncompromising war against the Jews. That naturally included active opposition to the Jewish national home in Palestine. Germany would furnish positive and practical aid to the Arabs involved in the same struggle. Germany's objective is solely the destruction of the Jewish element residing in the Arab sphere. In that hour, the Mufti would be the most authoritative spokesman for the Arab world. Then the Mufti thanked Hitler profusely. Two German historians say that Hitler had a plan to extend the Holocaust to the Middle East and had forged an alliance with Arab nationalists. This is perhaps why Hitler met with the Mufti and provided him a budget of 750,000 Reichsmarks per month to foment a jihad in Palestine. The alliance did not alter Hitler's racist views toward Arabs, reflected in his refusal to shake the Mufti's hand or drink coffee with him. In 1945, Yugoslavia sought to indict the Mufti as a war criminal for his role in recruiting 20,000 Muslim volunteers for the SS, who participated in the killing of Jews in Croatia and Hungary. He escaped from French detention in 1946, however, and continued his fight against the Jews from Cairo and later Beirut. He died in 1974. A document attesting to the connection between Nazi Germany and the Mufti was released in March 2017. In the letter published by the National Library of Israel Archives, SS Chief Heinrich Himmler heaps praise upon Mufti, stating that the Nazi leadership has been closely following the battle of freedom-seeking Arabs, and especially in Palestine, against the Jewish invaders. And Himmler ends the letter by bidding the Mufti warm wishes for the continuation of your battle until the big victory. This letter was delivered in the fall of 1943, two years after the Mufti's famous meeting with Adolf Hitler. At the same time all of this was going on, and much more, 
with these monstrous subhuman mass murders. What was America learning about the Holocaust? Not even the Mufti. Germany. Not a lot. This is the New York Times itself. Itself. Here are the books. One, two, three, four. Four books and my own book on the conduct of the New York Times and the rest of the media during the course of the Holocaust. This is David S. Wyman. He wasn't Jewish. The Abandonment of the Jews. Here's another one, Laurel Leff, Buried by the Times. And here's another one, Beyond Belief. All scholarly books, endless endnotes on how the New York Times covered up the Holocaust. The same New York Times that now essentially is a special pleader for the Palestinians and for Hamas and against the Jewish state of Israel. They even did their own report, 1851 to 2001, 150th anniversary, turning away from the Holocaust. They had a former managing editor take a careful look at their conduct during the Holocaust. Max Frankel, November 14, 2001. And he starts it this way. And then there was failure, none greater than the staggering, staining failure of the New York Times to depict Hitler's methodical extermination of the Jews of Europe as a horror beyond all other horrors in World War II, a Nazi war within the war crying out for illumination. The annihilation of six million Jews would not for many years become distinctively known as the Holocaust, but its essence became knowable fast enough. From ominous Nazi threats and undisputed eyewitness reports collected by American correspondents, agents, and informants, it goes on. Indeed, a large number of those reports appeared in the Times, but they were mostly buried inside its gray and stolid pages, never featured, analyzed, or rendered truly comprehensible. There were a total of six front page stories during the course of the Third Reich and the Holocaust, usually at the bottom of the page, on aspects of what might be occurring, they said in Germany and the rest of Europe. When the New York Times even wrote about it, it was tucked in the back pages under car ads, under the opening of cafes, on page 28, and on and on. This is emblematic of the media at the time. Washington Post was no better. The rest of the media were no better. And it's emblematic of the media today, which has shifted its focus from the mon monstrous atrocities that occurred to Gaza. Now, what about Gaza? Gaza was land that belonged to Egypt. When Israel conquered Egypt and the other countries that attacked it, it would eventually have this part of the Gaza Strip. And it's interesting, the Egyptians really didn't want it back. And so about 20 years ago, the Israelis removed all their settlements from the area, gave the land to the Palestinians. You might call it a two-state solution, pushed by the West, more like a final solution. And then two years later, Hamas gets elected by the Palestinians living in Gaza and, of course, doesn't give up power. Hamas is an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood. As a matter of fact, it's called the Muslim Brotherhood in Palestine. The Muslim Brotherhood, as you'll soon learn, has a massive network throughout the world all kinds of organizations, terrorist organizations, so-called educational groups, indoctrination groups, all kinds of different names, one layer on top of another, on top of another, and on top of another, and you're going to learn about one, and now you'll know why there are student protests on our campuses, because just like the Confucius Institutes that the Communist Chinese have placed on our college campuses, Students for Justice in Palestine are on more of our college campuses. Many of the people in those organizations are individuals who've come here from the Middle East for the purpose of a jihad, but indoctrination on our college campuses. Uh, they are funded by radical left-wing organizations, and, and, and organizations actually with ties to terrorists in the Middle East. And that's why you're seeing so much of this protest going on in these ready-made signs and 
swastikas on the flags and all the rest of it taking place. But I have several questions I want to ask rhetorically to the American media. When you compare the number of people who were slaughtered in Israel, targeted to be slaughtered, and know that the mission statement of Hamas, the Muslim Brotherhood, and the jihadists is to wipe all the Jews off the face of the earth, and by the way, all non-believers off the face of the earth, many of you. Do you realize that if they hadn't been stopped in a 24 to 48 hour period of time, they would have been happy to slaughter all 7 million Jews? And to compare that to what's going on in Gaza, when the Jews, some of whom experienced the Holocaust, all of whom know their history, know all about Hamas, the Muslim Brotherhood, terrorism, Nazism, say after decades of these terrorist attacks by Hamas, which exists to do this, which is funded by Iran, funded by Qatar. That's right, Qatar, an American ally. You start counting body counts and you create moral equivalency, it's outrageous. In fact, our media today is counting a killed Palestinian Hamas terrorist killed with a beheaded baby in a kibbutz. These statistics are meant as propaganda to promote the loss of a war by Israel. That is, they don't want Israel to win. Meanwhile, there's not one Arab country, not one, not one, that has said, we will take in some of the Palestinians in Gaza. They don't want them. Egypt, the home of the Muslim Brotherhood, is blocking the main passageway for the civilians in Gaza to leave. Who's pressuring them to open it? I don't even know if our government is. But the Israelis keep pressuring them. Open the gates, open the gates. We want these people to leave. They won't open the gates. And of course, Hamas, as you well know, is threatening the people in Gaza and telling them, you damn well better not leave. So the Jews are saying, leave. We want to kill the terrorists. And Hamas is saying, no, you're going to stay. We need you. We need you for propaganda. Because we know the New York Times, the American media, and the European media will be our best friends. It's only a matter of time. And they will turn the tables. You will become now the oppressor. We will become the victims. We will survive this. We will be stronger. And the message will be sent throughout the Middle East that you can slaughter Jews too, because in the end, you will survive. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.